The men's 1,000 meter K2 about to get underway now. We've got six very tough and good boats in the field. In the top of your lane, you're going to be seeing the Austrian boat. In second, with the great 1979 world champion Rasmussen, will be the Norwegian boat. Kenna White from the USA in the third lane. And in the fifth lane, JT Canada, who's already gone out to lead in the white visors. Fisher and Morris, favored for the gold. There's the US boat, number three. And Fisher and Morris in the white visors. They are, right now, favored for the gold medal in this event. Why is that, JT? Well, they have been very, very competitive at world championship level for the last three years. They've had an excellent early racing season this year. They've raced in Moscow. They've raced in Brandenburg, which are the two biggest international races. They're ready to go here. The boat at the closest to, to us on the screen is the People's Republic of China, uh, a country not very well known in international paddling so far, but uh, doing very well at this point. Diana, uh, I predict this is a burn and die situation. They're coming out. They're going at the same pace as the leaders are, but this is a four-minute race, and uh, they can't go at that pace for the whole four minutes. Well, at least they're going for it. The, t this, the team at the very top of your screen now, the Austrians, happen to train in California in the winter, but Fisher and Morris, at the bottom of your screen, and the white visors are the smooth Canadian paddlers. Train on those cold lakes up there in Canada all during the year. This is a nice move here. We see the United States coming up next to Fisher and Morris. This would be a very, very good race for them if they can come straight through this. Uh, White and Kent are a new boat for the United States. They've been together only about six weeks, and but the boat has just had the correct timing that it's really moved well together, Diana. That's the, the American team here in the stroke. The bow boat is Terry White, 28 years old, was a whitewater kayaker, which I'm sure gives him a great deal of strength. And in the stern was Terry Kent there, 20, Cornell student in engineering. The American boat doing very well. Only the top three need to finish to make it into the semis. They go through red, white, and blue buoys, as you see here, and that's their indication that they are still in the early parts of the race. When it gets down to 150 meters to go, they're going to start getting into the yellow buoys, and then you'll see once we hit the finals also, all the boats will be picking up very strongly. The Canadians not having to push very hard in this heat. You can see their stroke rate has dropped down. They're down below 100 here. What they're using is power. You can see the power with Fisher's stroke here, but they've kept the rate down, so they're trying to get a lot of movement, but uh, you can experience how hard Fisher is pulling on each one of those strokes. Try and do it as easily as you can. Now, when you speak of stroke rate of 100, you're speaking of 100 turnovers per minute, and when they, when they paddle all out, as you'll see when it's a tight, tight race for the medals, they're going to go 120 times. Oh, they're getting close to the lane over here, JT. This is dangerous, because if they even put a paddle across that lane line, they would be DQ'd. Okay, Alwyn is taking the boat back out into the middle of the lane. Now the stroke, the man sitting in the front of the boat, Alwyn Morris, is actually steering that boat with his feet. He has a little bit of a steering rudder mechanism in there. The crowd out in full glory today, 10,000 of them, lining the lawn up in the bleachers, and they're yelling for that U.S. boat to come up on the Canadian. <laughs> they certainly are, and I would expect uh, Terry White and Terry Kent are going to respond to that pressure. There they come. Look at this. They're opening up. It really doesn't make any difference whether they're first or whether they're second or third here, Diana, but they're trying to get that second place. And we put up our line so you can see just where the line is. The Canadians do win the heat. The Americans were second, and I wouldn't want to call that third place. It was very, very tight there. The Austrians up in lane one, and France down in lane six. That was very, very close at the finish. Uh, we're going to have to see a replay on this uh, finish before we're going to know it. Well, they've got a okay. technical system of knowing just who comes across. They have a photo finish if they need it. Canadians easily come across. Here are the Americans. And what do you say about third, JT? Third place? Boy, it's still close. Oh, man. I would say from this angle that I would call that it was the Austrians, but I want to see the tower's interpretation of this. It looks like the Austrians have it. The tower you're referring to on the far side of the screen, and here, here they were in trouble. Yeah, they're really close here. Now, they're may by really close interpretation, they almost could get red flagged here. They didn't have a red flag on the race, but... I'm not sure why Alwyn is letting that boat go that far unless they had some sort of steering problems. They could have broken a cable and be steering only by the paddle strokes, but 
that would be really unusual. The red flag you're referring to is when something is out of order. You've gone outside of your lane or you've ridden someone else's wash, which you're not allowed to do. Here's the U.S. moving by Austria into that second place. This was strategically a very good move because I'm not sure that they knew the French were coming up as hard as they were. They could have easily gotten eliminated by this if they'd been satisfied to sit back on that third place. It's a good shot of the skirts they wear while they're, while they're paddling also. They've got to get their boats in to be waved, very specific specifications. And Fisher and Morris from Canada has expected win. The U.S. and Austria also qualify.